Okay, welcome to a micro video, uh, the concepts of Pareto efficiency and Pareto improvements in welfare are covered in this short topic video. So uh, Pareto efficiency is a concept that's often used in A-level economics essays. What does it mean? Well, in neoclassical economics, a Pareto efficient result or outcome is any action that harms no one, uh, but helps at least one person. And we reach Pareto optimality or Pareto efficiency if the only way, only way to make one person better off is to make somebody else worse off. And we can use the production possibility curve or the production possibility frontier to illustrate the concept of Pareto efficiency and also a Pareto improvement in welfare. Pareto efficiency will occur on any point that lies on the production possibility frontier or curve itself. Uh, because when the country is operating on a PPF, it's not possible to increase output of goods or services without reducing the output of something else. In other words, we have to make an output sacrifice. On the other hand, when a country lies uh, well within or below the PPF, well, we say there's an inefficient use of resources or an underutilization of scarce inputs. In other words, we might have unemployment of labor and capital and land. In that situation, it becomes possible for output of both the two goods and services we're showing on the X and the Y axis to increase at the same time. So let's take a look diagrammatically at this. Here's a production possibility curve uh, or PPF. It shows the maximum possible output combinations uh, of two goods or services, in this case wheat and beef, that a country can achieve when all factor resources are fully and efficiently employed. Well, if we have points on the curve, both points A and B are Pareto efficient. Uh, and indeed, moving from A to B involves a sacrifice. We're increasing our output of beef from B1 to B2. But there's an opportunity cost here. Uh, we're sacrificing some production of wheat. But A and B would both be Pareto efficient. They lie on the curve. In contrast, combinations including, for example, points C and D... Well, they're well within the PPF, and that shows an inefficient or underutilization of resources. That is Pareto inefficient. Uh, well, if we think about a combination at C and a combination at A, remember, A lies on the curve, C lies beneath the curve. Uh, so I'm just going to draw to the axes there. We'll put some numbers in, just, just for illustration. Uh, that's uh, C is Pareto inefficient, but of course, if we... If we could move towards the curve, uh, move from C to point A, that would be a Pareto improvement because we can increase the output of both products, uh, moving from within the PPF to a point on the boundary itself. And likewise, a movement from C to D would also be a Pareto improvement. Quite important when you're discussing Pareto efficiency and Pareto improvements to bring in the concept of equity or fairness in the distribution of income. Uh, a result, an outcome that may be a Pareto improvement, doesn't always mean uh, this is a satisfactory or fair outcome. There can still be, often is, inequality after a Pareto improvement. We need to see, we need to focus on which groups, which people, which agents in the economy actually benefit from increased output of goods and services. Who gets the extra healthcare? Who gets the extra food? Who gets the extra access to education? Showing on a diagram a Pareto improvement does not imply a judgment about the equality of the final distribution or the impact on social welfare. That's part of the wider discussion. But there we go. I've taken you through a key diagram to show Pareto efficiency and Pareto improvements.